All right, in this short video, we are going to discuss the reorder point. Up to this point in the chapter, we've talked about an economic order quantity or, or an economic production quantity. And that tells us, um, that calculation tells us how many pieces to make or to buy of something. Well, the reorder point tells us when to buy it. It's a very simple calculation. It's very easy to use. And you can use this calculation with or without a buffer for safety stock. So I'm going to talk you through how safety stock would incorporate into the reorder point. But for the for sake of this course, I'm going to teach you the reorder point calculation, and we are not going to add the safety stock buffer. So a reorder point is when the quantity on hand of an item drops to a specific amount then that item is reordered. And you can do the reorder point calculation whether something is a make item or a buy item. So if you're buying it from a vendor or if you're making it internally is irrelevant, the calculation is exactly the same. We're gonna go over some other tricks in later chapters like um, a Kanban where when you're using a bin system, if you fall below a specific amount of stock on hand visually, then you reorder more at that time but for sake of the reorder point calculation, this is something that you will do and you do behind the scenes in either MRP or in spreadsheets where your team knows when you fall below a specific amount, that's when you buy or make more. So for the reorder point calculation, you need to know the rate of demand. So what's your demand? How many are you using per day or per week or per month or per year? You need to know your lead time. That's when you place an order for something, how long does it take until it arrives at your facility? So from time of placement to arrival, that is your lead time. That can also be days or weeks or months. Your demand and or lead time variability. Lead times do have some variability. Demand has some variability. Many times when you do these calculations, you'll build that variability into the calculation. And so that's, um, that's something that you can look at when doing the reorder point calculation. And then the stock out risk over the safety stock. If you want to add that buffer in, whether it's one day or two day or a couple weeks worth of safety stock, you can add the safety stock buffer in. But again, for sake of this class, we're just going to look at the reorder point equals your demand, your daily demand multiplied by your lead time. And that's it. Okay. Your daily demand multiplied by your lead time. So your reorder point, the calculation is lowercase d, which is demand per day, multiplied by your lead time for a new order. To get that lowercase d, the daily demand, you may or may not have to take your uppercase d, which is your annual demand, and divide that by the number of working days per year. So once again, safety stock is the stock that is held in excess of expected demand due to variable demand rate and or lead times. So uh, I think one of the earlier um, on, on economic order quantity, you know, I showed you that beautiful chart where everything that you order can be uh, delivered and received on time, right? If you know, if your demand is constant and your lead time is constant and there's no variability, you do not need to work safety stock into the equation because everything happens perfectly. But that's not real life. A vendor might say it's going to take seven days to get to you and they take eight or they take nine or there are things that are out of their control and maybe the package gets lost or um, the, uh, the port goes on strike. Whatever it may be, you want to incorporate a little bit of buffer into your delivery so that you are not having shortages. Again, with inventory management, the goal is to find that right amount. You never want to run out, but you want to try and keep that inventory as low as possible. So you may or may not incorporate some safety stock into your calculations. So you can see if everything goes perfectly, you don't need to build in that safety stock uh, buffer. But many times you will want to add some safety stock because it reduces the risk of stock out during that lead time. Okay. So for sake of this course and how we're going to calculate the reorder point, your reorder point is your daily demand multiplied by lead time. So for this example, your annual demand is 10,000 chips per year. The store is open 311 days per year. Your lead time is 10 days. So when you order something, it will arrive 
10 days later. So the calculation is, when do we reorder? What's our reorder point? So the very first step, you can see that I gave you your annual demand of 10,000 ships per year. I did not give you your daily demand, so you need to calculate that yourself by taking your annual demand divided by the working days per year, which is 311. So you now know you're using 32 chips per day, but you're not trying to figure out how many chips you're using per day. You're trying to figure out when to reorder. Since your lead time is 10 days, you will then multiply 10 days multiplied by your daily demand, which is 32 chips per day. So your reorder point is 322 chips. When you fall below 322 chips, you will have either a automatic reorder or your team will know to reorder. That's when we go and buy whatever our economic order quantity is or our economic production quantity is. But once you fall below that amount, that, that amount, you've got 10 days before you theoretically run out again. So you go and you reorder at that point once you hit below that number. So it's it. It's a very simple calculation. It's called the reorder print calculation. For our class, we will not include safety stock, but you can in your careers.